Mahatma Gandhi's Nonviolence for Building a Peaceful Society, authored by Quan Yushang, video recorded by Mo Hanshang. Dear Dr. Wuday Krishna, Sri Siddharamaya Ji, Sudhindra Kukani, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to be invited by Kanataka Gandhi's Maraka Nidhi to virtually participate in this important international seminar on the theme, Mahatma Gandhi for the 21st century, building a global future of peace, justice, fraternity, and sustainable development. In commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the National Gandhi's Maraka Nidhi. On this occasion, I would like to talk something about Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolence for building a peaceful society. As we know, nonviolence is advocated in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, in its Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain contexts. Nonviolence, that is, ahimsa, stands for not injury to living beings. Gandhi uses this phrase, but gives it a total different new meaning. Gandhi refines its meaning by applying the term to human and social interactions especially, and by introducing the positive connotation of ahimsa as love. For Gandhi, nonviolence involves not only the negative connotation of refraining from doing injury to any living being, either physical or mentally, but also the positive connotation of extending the love which one naturally has for one's near relations to all humankind, including one's enemy. It includes the positive connotations of affection, compassion, sympathy, mercy, generosity, service, and self-sacrifice, as well as the negative ones of non-injury and non-harm. In other words, in its positive form, nonviolence means largest to love, greatest to charity. Nonviolence as love is regarded by Gandhi as a universal principle on which the very existence of the world and human society depend. As he said, though the society, the social structure is not based on a conscious acceptance of nonviolence, all the world over humankind lives. Families are bound together by ties of love, and so are groups in the so-called civilized society called nations. Therefore, nonviolence as love is the law of human species, just as violence is the law of beasts. Nonviolence as love is not the weapon of the weak, but of the strong and brave. It is a moral and soul force, which means to oppose material force with spiritual, spiritual force, to oppose physical force by soul force, to conquer hatred with love, to return good for evil, to move others with self-suffering and self-sacrifice. Gandhi lived in an age full of violence, which made him seek nonviolence as the remedy. Today, the situation in the world is almost the same as in Gandhi's time, if not worse. Violence and conflict, uh, conflict still threaten world peace and humankind's existence. Gandhi's remedy is still valid or rather more urgent and necessary in today's world. Violence cannot prevent violence. On the, on the contrary, it can only accelerate it. No other way but nonviolence can bring peace to the world and welfare to humankind. It is only through nonviolence that the salvation of humankind is possible. So we should fall back upon the Gandhian philosophy of nonviolence as love, especially Gandhi's doctrine and application of nonviolence not only had a strong influence on the Gandhi's independent uh, Indian independence movement and the 20th century's world as he lived, but also has a far reaching influence in the uh, 30 of uh, 21st century's world, including China after his death. Quite often, many of my Indian friends ask me a question. Being a Gandhian scholar, 
what do you think is the relevance of Mahatma Gandhi to today's China? With this question in mind, since 2012, I have been researching the topic on Gandhi's studies in China over a century long saga from 1920s to the 21st century. I've written an article, The Relevance of Mahatma Gandhi to China in the uh, 21st century, some cases. For the magazine, India China Chronicle, which is published in November to December 2019, which consists of four parts. Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolence, Mahatma Gandhi's simple living and high thinking, Mahatma Gandhi's pursuit of public good. Therefore, here I would like to share the second part, Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolence with you. Mr. Bei Ye, a Chinese writer, scholar, expert of community issues, under the influence of Mahatma Gandhi's doctrine of nonviolence, applied Gandhi's nonviolent approach to residential community governance so as to safeguard the legal rights of the residents in the community. He put forward a slogan for maintaining legal rights in 2006, that is nonviolence and cooperation by which to make contributions to building up a harmonious society. He wrote, Mahatma Gandhi created miracles by his spirit of pursuing truth via nonviolence and non-cooperation and defeated the powerful British Empire by using peaceful methods. We have derived such an inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi as follows. That is, in the process of building up harmonious company, uh, com a community, our slogan is to pursue social justice via nonviolence and cooperation. We are now in a historic transformation period. So we can only create our new life via mutual understanding and caring via nonviolence and cooperation. In Mao's era, there's no such kind of issues in China because at that time, all estate properties belonged to the to state and the government and everyone lived in his or her own working unit apartments are paying by paying very little rental fee. The Department of Estate Properties of the working unit took responsibilities for maintaining it. All people lived in their own working unit of permanent buildings. But in post Mao's era, especially in late 1990s and early 21st century, all working units apartments were sold to employees and many more people bought their apartments in newly built residence community areas and moved out of their working unit apartments. Newly built residence community areas were recited with people from different working units and property management company took responsibilities of maintaining all estate properties. So a new kind of conflicts appeared between property management companies and property owners in its early stage. On March, two, on March 1st, 2006, CCTV made a TV program called News Pro. The story of property owners maintaining their legal rights. Mr. Bayer was one of the three interviewees who were either current or previous heads of three different residence community areas in Beijing. It, it is said, that when it came to the topic concerning property owners maintaining their legal rights, one could not help having pictures of contradictions and conflicts between property owners and property management companies, a state property developer occurred in mind. There were many court cases and some violent incidents. Why residents' community areas became battlefields rather than places to live in peace. How to maintain property owners' legal rights when violated? What are the ultimate goals of maintaining property owners' legal rights? In Mr. Bayer's opinion, he acts of maintaining property owners' legal rights is a scholar civil experiment. He starts 
from ex, uh, cl uh, claims for his own and his neighbor's legal rights and uh, gradually moves on to focus on public affairs within his residence community. And finally, upgrades to ponder over issues of maintaining legal rights of the whole society. Each week, he organizes a virtual education seminar in his apartment, discussing topic concerning virtual education. He believes that virtual education is an integral part of civil education and the cultivation of awareness of civic obligations is the indispensable prerequisite for maintaining property owners' legal rights. Through nonviolent actions such as talk and negotiation, the conflict between property management companies and property owners is solved peaceful, uh, peacefully. Mr. Beiyi's residence community is rewarded an excellent one in Beijing. Nowadays, there is seldom news about violate, uh, violent incidents in uh, residential community areas. Mr. Beiyi keeps on um, promoting Mahatma Gandhi's thoughts. In his article published on website, he wrote, I believe we can learn a lot of meaningful things from Mahatma Gandhi and India's modernization road, especially some substantially spiritual things, just like our ancestors did when they went to India to get Buddhism. Mahatma Gandhi is our mentor and his spirit is a good remedy for China's society. Those who are longing for the recovery of humanity and progress of soul can get inspiration and strength from Gandhi's works. I hope to organize a Gandhi fans club on my website so we can keep in touch and exchange ideas. This is what Mr. Beiyi did in earlier 21st century in China. I think I have to stop my talk now. Thank you so much for your patience and attention.